briefly, I'm going to talk about what we're going to cover today so you'll, you'll get an idea about uh, what's coming up. We've got um, uh, a brief overview of Agile, and that's, there's my pointer. We've got a brief overview of Agile just uh, to help us all get on the same page with terminology and look at uh, a generic Agile process. Um, and then we'll be talking about the acceptance of Agile by the Project Management Institute. Um, and, and this is uh, primarily directed at traditionally trained project managers. And, and for most of us, being traditionally trained meant that uh, and still means that we obtained our information about how to be good project management managers from the Project Management Institute. So we're going to look at what they think about Agile right now and, and um, some of the common misconceptions surrounding um, PMI and the PMBOK. And, and uh, hopefully by the end of this presentation, you'll see that you can follow uh, PMI standards and still be in good keeping with them, as well as be an Agile project manager. So you can do both. We'll look at the differences between uh, a traditional approach and an Agile approach. And then we'll spend some time mapping just some of these key knowledge areas, integration, scope, quality, and risk, to what you would do in Agile practices. And for this section of the presentation, I've included lots of pictures so that you can see, ah, this is the type of tool we might use. This is what, say, uh, an iteration planning meeting looks like. This is what <clears throat> a schedule looks like in Agile. So I wanted you to, to have some type of visual cues um, that will help um, solidify some of this new Agile stuff. Then we're going to talk about how your role will change. And finally, we're going to uh, finish with where to find more information. So let's go ahead and, and dive in. The first thing I wanted to cover is the most important thing around Agile, and that's the Agile Manifesto. Um, back in uh, February 2001, uh, a group of like-minded individuals um, who've been practicing these new ways of developing software uh, met in Utah. And these, these folks were the creators of approaches like Scrum, uh, Extreme Programming, uh, Crystal, DSDM. These are all what we now know as agile approaches to software development. But at the time, <coughs> um, they were looking for a way to define what they were doing because they were uh, being called lightweight methodologies. That was the phrase that was currently being used to describe what they were doing. And, and they weren't necessarily fond of the connotations that went along with that phrase. Because and if you think about it, a product made using a lightweight approach, it just didn't sound as solid as a product made the traditional way. So they wanted to talk about um, what this new term might be to apply to their brand of software development. And they came up with the phrase agile. Um, they laid out their value system then in this manifesto and in um, an associated set of principles. But let's look at the manifesto first. Um, really, all this is, is you know, as we look through it, is it's just a common sense approach to the uh, creation um, and the delivery of software products. Here, they just simply state that we're uncovering better ways of developing software by doing it and by helping others to do it. And through this work, we've come to value these four things. Individuals and interactions over processes and tools. Working software over comprehensive documentation customer collaboration over contract negotiation, and responding to change over following a plan. And this is the important part right here. That is, while there is value in the items on the right, we value the items on the left more. So all it's saying is that if you take a look at a, a successful project, at the end of the project, and you're celebrating, and you're thinking, you know, you know, what was it about this project that made it such a, a success? I mean, you're not going to raise your glass and toast, say, SourceSafe. Woo, that SourceSafe was amazing. Isn't, isn't that the reason we're so successful? Um, if that's not what you tend to, to toast and raise your glass to. You, you'll say, you know, this was a wonderful team. Uh, they worked fantastically together to produce uh, an amazing piece of software um, that satisfied our customer and gave them exactly what they needed when they needed it. You're not celebrating the fact that you, you created a, a, an inch thick functional spec. 
these are your measures of success on the left, and therefore that's where the focus should be. Um, along with this manifesto, there are uh, 12 principles. And um, I don't have a slide for them, but you know, these are, are principles like um, working software is the primary measure of progress. Uh, the most effective and efficient way to convey information is via face-to-face -face communication. Um, and we deliver software frequently. We welcome changing requirements. Uh, our highest priority is to satisfy the customer. And these are all principles that are an important part of what it means to be agile. And you can learn more about them by visiting this website, agilemanifesto.org. Now, how is Agile different from traditional? I, I love this picture. It, when I first was learning about Agile, this is the thing that really drove it home for me. Um, the source is DSDM, one of the Agile uh, practices. And, and what they say is essentially what all we've done is we've flipped this triangle. Um, in waterfall or traditional approaches, all requirements are defined at the beginning of the project. And, and then they're locked in or they're fixed. So we then use that defined scope to estimate um, the resources we'll need and um, the amount of time it's going to take to finish the project. We end up uh, with a plan-driven project where we always have to be on guard against uh, allowing scope creep or, or changes in the requirements, in other words, because they might throw off our resource and time estimates. Now, in Agile, we have, in effect, flipped that triangle. And instead of fixing requirements, um, we now instead define the amount of time that we have to complete the project and what our resources are that we have available for the project. And, and we fix these. And then we estimate the number of features that we can complete given these two constraints. Now, because it's unlikely that we will finish them all, and that's regardless of whether you use Waterfall or Agile. It's really difficult to finish everything that everyone wants um, in a project. Um, so in Agile, we, we face that reality and say, well, we must now focus then on completing the most important things first, the things that are of the most business value to our customer. And, and that's the key difference is that we become value-driven and agile, whereas traditional methods are plan-driven, agile is value-driven, and, and not only in the way that we prioritize the features that we're going to um, pull together into working software for delivery, but also in the ways that we choose to work together to accomplish these deliveries. And, and those ways, are, again, are outlined in that manifesto um, and in its principles. So here's some of the uh, Agile frameworks. You can think of Agile as really an umbrella term that applies to any approach to software development that is iterative, that produces working code each iteration, what we call incremental. It produces an increment of code. And it relies on feedback that's used to inspect and adapt as needed. So these are some of the Agile frameworks that you'll hear about. Um, I need to point out real quickly that even though Scrum here is all capitalized, um, that's just an emphasis piece on my part. That's not how Scrum is spelled. It is not an acronym. It's a capital S and everything else is lowercase. It's a rugby term. And it was taken from a, uh, uh, a Harvard Business uh, Review white, uh, I'm sorry, article called The New, New Product Development Game where um, new product innovation was compared to uh, a rugby game in, in terms of scrumming, where everyone gets together uh, in a big circle and works really hard to move that ball down the field. It's a way to get teams unstuck and moving forward. And, and the reason that I've emphasized